I'm sometimes asked how the original ideas came for the Ealing comedies that Charles Crichton and I worked on together. The Lavender Hill Mob had a strange beginning. I was contracted to write a drama called Pool of London with the River Thames as its background. The plot was to concern the theft of gold bars from the Bank of England and the attempt to smuggle them out of the country. I discussed this with the appointed director and we were a bit stumped on how to get the gold abroad. At home that evening, I noticed an Eiffel Tower paperweight that someone had brought me back as a present from Paris. That would be an idea, I thought, for smuggling gold abroad in the form of cheap gifts actually made in Birmingham. Trouble was, this would be comedy and I was to be writing a drama. All right, just for fun, let's see how it would work as a comedy. After a couple of hours and two or three pages, I had a possible outline. Next morning, as I arrived at the studio, Sir Michael Balkan, the boss, was getting out of his car. How's the river story going, he asked. I said there'd been a rather unexpected development. Come in and tell me about it, he said. I started by asking him whether we could lose the river and he nearly hit the roof. How dared I, a mere writer, try to alter the whole studio program? I put my outline down on his desk and simply asked him to read it. He said, no, take it away. But I left it there. A few hours later, he sent for me. I've read that outline of yours, he said, as if we had never met this morning. I think we have a comedy there. Show it to Charlie Crichton, see what he thinks. What about the river then, I asked. Oh, you'd be no good at that. I've picked another writer. Charlie liked the idea and we went ahead. We now had our own means of smuggling the gold abroad, but how to steal it. I thought the people who could give me the best advice were clearly the Bank of England. So I went there in search of information and forgot to say on my chit that I wanted it for a film. A request for advice on how to rob them of a million pounds caused them some surprise. And I was taken to see a very senior executive. Once we had sorted things out and he understood my problem, he called in the heads of several other departments and they worked out between them how the money could be stolen. The method used in the film is entirely the result of their willing cooperation. I don't suppose security would allow anything like that today. Even then, Alec Guinness was not allowed to be shown coming out of the bank. We had to cheat it by showing him coming out of a neighboring doorway. For a long time, we couldn't decide how to end the film. Then I remembered something that happened when I was once a police war reserve. One night, our superintendent's car was stolen from outside the police station. The stealing of a police car provides the climax of this picture. Incidentally, I'm sorry we had to get Alec Guinness caught at the end. In those days, the censor wouldn't allow him to get away with it. Charles Crichton has no such inhibitions in his latest picture, A Fish Called Wanda.